Magical Meditations, Guided Imagery for the Pagan Path, Abridged by Yasmin Galanorn. Meditation is the art of contemplation. Simply put, to meditate is to focus on a particular thought or subject in order to achieve a predetermined goal. Just about every religion in many secular orders practice some form of meditation. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism have prayers. Zen and Chan Buddhists have dhyana, Sanskrit for concentrated meditation, yoga practices. Islam has daikir. Today, the terms mantra and mandala have become familiar. Transcendental meditation, which was popularized during the 1970s, blends Eastern mysticism with Western practicality. Some people use meditation as a form of prayer to elevate their consciousness and become closer to the God form they recognize. Some people use meditation as a form of prayer to elevate their consciousness and become closer to the God form they recognize. Others use meditation to reduce stress and to let go of the past and to let go of the fast-paced world surrounding them. Still others use it to explore their inner selves so they might live less conflicted lives. All of the above forms and reasons have their place, but many of the more religious-based practices take years of rigorous study and devotion to learn. You will explore a form of meditation that just about anyone can practice, including children. Your ultimate goal in learning to use guided meditations should be to hone your powers of visualization and concentration. Magic is a demanding practice, but the rewards can be substantial and if done with proper intent, gratifying. Guided meditation makes magical practice easier. It helps you learn to focus your mind and thereby focus your will. Focused will or energy provides results. Some other spiritual benefits from the regular use of guided meditation include heightened intuition, psychic dreams, better results from the spells you cast, and an enhanced sense of what I call fairy sight, the ability to see into other realms. For example, the fairy realm or the mystical side of nature. By heightening awareness through guided meditation, you will also find an increased ability to concentrate while studying, reading, and completing mundane tasks. You can create short and long-term goals and use guided meditation to help you achieve them. Many forms of meditation stress that emptying the mind of all extraneous thought is the way to peace and tranquility. While that may be true, our goal in this book is to learn how to visualize and use concentrated focus to affect our lives and bring about changes in consciousness. Shall we begin? Exercises in preparation for meditation. Loosening the body exercise. Make sure your clothes are comfortable. Loosen any tight straps or binding fasteners. Take three deep breaths. Stand up and reach up toward the ceiling. Now you can do this while sitting in a chair if necessary. Just adapt the movements to what you can do. And keeping your right foot flat on the ground to bear your weight, stretch toward the ceiling with your left side, arm raised and taut, hand splayed. Point your left leg in front of you and stretch your leg and foot so only the toes of your left foot touch the ground. Hold for a count of five. Slowly lower your foot to the ground and draw your leg back. Now, reach up with your right side, arm raised and taut, hand splayed. This time allow your left foot to bear your weight. 
Extend your right leg and stretch as before, holding for a count of five. Slowly lower your foot to the floor and draw your leg back. Next, gently drop your arms to your sides. Lean to your left as if the floor was pulling your arm down. Hold for a count of five. Slowly come up again and repeat on the right side. Now gently bend forward from the waist and let your arms dangle in front of you. Bend your knees. You should not feel any pain while doing this and shake your body gently from side to side. Now raise up again. Take three deep breaths. Examine how your body feels now. When you are meditating, you must be able to relax so your focus can be entirely on the journey in front of you. This last exercise was a gentle way to let go of tension and prepare yourself for meditation. It is also helpful anytime you need to take a break from a stressful situation. Listening to the breath exercise. Make sure you are wearing comfortable clothing and that you have privacy for at least 10 minutes. Take a moment to do the loosening the body exercise and then sit in a comfortable position. Take three deep breaths. As you let out the third breath, close your eyes. Now sit still, breathing normally, but listen to your breath as you take it in and then as you let it out. Feel your lungs expand as you inhale and feel them contract as you exhale. Breathe through your mouth. Does it feel different from when you breathe through your nose? Each time your mind starts to wander, stop. Gently bring your focus back to your breathing and start again. Practice this for five minutes, then take another three deep breaths and open your eyes. It can help to set a timer so you know when the five minutes are over. You will probably find that the time drags at first. Five minutes can be a long time when you aren't used to focusing on one subject. Practicing the listening to the breath exercise once or twice a day for a week and discover what differences you notice. Taste test exercise. On a tray, arrange a slice of lemon, a piece of chocolate and a whole lemon, and a wrapped chocolate bar. Sit in a comfortable position with a large glass of water nearby. Take three deep breaths. Now pick up the lemon, look at it closely, feel its weight and texture. Set the lemon down and pick up the slice of lemon. Close your eyes and bite into the slice. Feel the juice explode in your mouth. Notice how your face responds to the taste. What muscles tense up? What is your expression? Explore the taste of the fruit. Is it hard to chew? Or does it slide easily down your throat? 
When you are finished, take a drink of the water to clear the taste from your mouth. Now pick up the chocolate bar, examine the wrapper, notice the wording on it, the color of the paper. Is it wrapped in gold or silver foil? Is the bar heavy or is it light? Now pick up the piece of chocolate and slip it onto your tongue. Let it melt a little. Feel the pressure as you carefully bite into it. What does the taste do for you? What is it like? Is the chocolate plain or does it have something in it? The purpose of the exercise was to learn to recreate senses in your mind, to stimulate your imagination. To be most effective, the journeys and guided meditations must encompass as many senses as possible. Therefore, the more you can recreate in your mind what you experience in reality, the deeper your trance will be and the more effective your meditation will become. Favorite song exercise. We've all had the experience of suddenly realizing that an advertising jingle or a song we heard on the radio is still running through our minds. The purpose of this exercise is to recreate that experience. Obtain a good, clear recording of your favorite song. For our purposes here, it should be catchy and have both lyrics and music. Make yourself comfortable. Take three deep breaths and turn on the song. Close your eyes and listen to it all the way through. Stand up while playing the song a second time. While keeping your eyes closed, move gently in response to the rhythm. When you finish listening to the song a second time, sit down and close your eyes. Visualize yourself pressing the button to rewind the tape, and then pressing another to play it. Hear the song. Don't try to force yourself to remember every word. Just let the music pour out of your mind. If you feel like moving to the music in your head, go ahead. If your mind starts to wander, mentally pause the tape. Bring your attention back, then allow the song to continue. When you are finished playing the song back to yourself, take three deep breaths and open your eyes. Being able to listen to your inner self while undergoing a guided meditation is very important. Words have power. Words are magical. If we cannot hear ourselves at a subconscious level, then we've lost our most important guide. Your subconscious mind contains the answers to many of your philosophical as well as mundane questions. It encompasses the self-knowledge that allows us to be autonomous creatures. Spirit guides and gurus are fine, but our best and first mentor should be our own self. No one should make decisions for you. We must be able to access our inner voices to be holistic, centered beings.
cleansing and protecting. In this chapter, I offer a simple but effective cleansing and protecting meditation. The section called Guidelines for You suggests various crystals, flowers, and other accoutrements that you might want to have nearby during your meditation. You may choose to set up a small altar for use during your meditation. Feel free to use all of my suggestions or none or to create your own traditions. I recommend making your meditation a special time and the use of flowers, scents, and crystals can accentuate this. Guidelines for use. This meditation is appropriate for any time we feel the need to clear our thoughts or when we are feeling vulnerable and want to feel stronger. I recommend taking a bath in warm water with lavender bath salts or a bubble bath before performing this meditation. You might also wish to smudge yourself before you begin the meditation. Smudging is an ancient form of purification that aids in altering consciousness. I highly recommend it before meditating and I recommend the use of white sage or cedar, though other incenses will work. Just use something appropriate to the individual meditation. To smudge yourself, light the incense or smudge stick, a bundle of sacred herbs, and wave the smoke over your body, inhaling deeply. As you exhale, let go of tension and stress. To smudge someone else, have them stand while you wave the smoke around your body. You can use your hand or a large feather to guide the smoke. Try to let the smoke touch all chakra points. And then trade places. Just be careful not to touch the person with the burning herb or catch their hair on fire. If you are allergic to smoke, you can produce a similar effect by asperging or spraying lightly with water in which sacred herbs have been sitting. To asperge, steep a cedar branch or lavender flowers in warm water for 10 minutes, then strain. Use the cedar branch to gently flick droplets of the water over yourself. The drops of water carry the purifying essence of the herbs. Be cautious not to flick the water onto paintings or books or other objects that might not take too well to water strains. Cleansing and protecting meditation. Ingredients. Flowers. Lavender sprig, white carnation, white rose, incenses, lavender, cedar, sage, pine, oils, lavender, rosemary, rose, geranium, crystals, amethyst, blue agate, sapphire, aquamarine, candles, blue, white, lavender. Relax, sit back, and make sure you are in a comfortable position. Now close your eyes and take three deep breaths. You are standing on a path looking toward a large forest. The sun is up, it is mid-morning and it's the sort of day that makes you want to find a warm meadow in which you can lie and look at the clouds. The color of the sky is rich with blue and tiny white streaks of clouds lazily drift by. They are so far up you can barely see them. A sparrow darts by, then another. You watch them for a minute then turn your attention to the path in front of you. A long path, it's narrow and worn, as if many feet have walked here before. It leads to the forest and you feel a pull urging you forward. 
There is something in the forest that sings out your name. And though you want nothing more than to relax, you decide to follow the call and see where it leads you. Step onto the path and begin walking toward the forest. The grass to either side of the path is dry. The summer sun has dried it until it's like straw, withered yellow and harsh on the skin. Looking at it makes you feel parched, and you wonder if the rains will come again to replenish the earth. Follow the path as it leads you to the edge of the forest. There the cool shade from the cedars and oaks standing sentinel promises a welcome relief from the intense heat that is rising as noon approaches. As you step onto the path that leads through the forest, the shelter of the branches provides instant comfort. Look around to get your bearings. You notice small animals peering out of the undergrowth. Here a rabbit watches you, nose twitching and ready to bolt. There under a huckleberry, a robin searches for a worm. A squirrel is climbing a nearby cedar and stops for a moment to look you over, then continues on its way. Look around and see what else you can find in the undergrowth. Now, continue along the path. As you go deeper into the woods, a sense of calmness, of peace, begins to descend around your shoulders like a cloak, muffling whatever tensions you have brought with you. The silence is comforting, a hush that stills the chatter in your mind. Listen quietly as you will walk among the cedars. These trees must have been growing for hundreds of years, you think. They are huge, old, with gnarled faces in their bark, and they watch you gently as you pass by. Some of the faces smile, others just watch silently noting your passage. And these are sentinels, guardians of the forest. They will not allow anything or anyone to disrupt their realm. You are safe as you walk among them. Now, the forest thickens as the path narrows even further and you wonder if it is ever going to end. You are considering turning back when you see, up ahead, the end of the path, with an opening into a meadow. Ivy twines down the oaks that guard the portal. You see the vines twist around the trunks. They are alive. They move and sway in the breeze. But as you approach, they pull back so you may enter. Step through the opening and find yourself in a large, bowl-shaped lay. It is a meadow of immense proportions. It might have been, in a time long past, a giant crater on a volcano, or an ancient lake, long dried up and vanished. But now, it is filled with grass the color of peridot, sparkling green and lush with dew that has not yet dried. Wild flowers dot the meadow, burgundy and fuchsia, yellow and vivid orange. You can smell their scents on the light breeze around you.
In the center of the meadow, you see a small pond. The water sparkles as sunlight finds its way through the opening in the wooded glen, reflecting like diamonds and palest sapphires. Water lilies float on the surface and frogs croak from the shore. It's very warm now that you are no longer shaded by the trees. And though the forest continues on the other side, you feel that this pond is what called you. Approach the water and look at it for a moment. The pond is cool, it radiates peace, and you feel that if you could only touch it, slide into the shimmering liquid, it would wash away all the tension, care, and worry that permeates your everyday existence. Slowly remove your clothes and drape them over a nearby bush. Don't be afraid or ashamed, there's no one here to see you. As you undress, a big fuzzy bumblebee flies by on a drunken flight from flower to flower, first landing on some Indian paintbrush, then flying to a patch of cornflowers, and finally making its way to a daisy. Step to the edge of the water, sit down on the grass and dangle your feet in the pool. The water has been warmed by the sun, and though it is refreshing, it doesn't chill you. The pond is shallow. You can slide in and sit with your back against the bank without immersing your head. Slide into the water and make yourself comfortable. Lean back and close your eyes. Something tickles your feet as you sit up to look. You notice tiny fish darting in and out around your toes. They appear to be kissing you, and then you realize that they are like the fish that follow the dolphins and whales. They are cleaning your body. As they gently remove dirt and grime off of your legs and arms, they also suck the tension from your muscles. Lean forward so they can reach your back and shoulders. When they're finished and have left, you notice that a lily pad is floating near you. Something shiny is on the flower. It's dusted with a sparkling powder. Take a little of the powder in your hand and wet it. It lathers up, foaming with bubbles. As you begin to wash your body with the foam, it tingles against your skin, energizing and revitalizing wherever it touches. Wash your body and face with the lather and then dip under the pond to rinse it off your skin. After you wipe the water out of your eyes, you hear a croaking nearby and turn to see a frog sitting on the shore near your clothes. Next to the frog is a crystal goblet, and in the goblet is a golden liquid that shines like the sun. Welcome to my pond, the frog says. All who need healing and cleansing may come and take refuge in my crystal waters. Step out of the pond and let the sun's warm light begin to dry your body. The frog watches carefully as you kneel down so you can talk to it more easily. I am the guardian of the pond, the frog says. You have cleansed yourself in my waters. Now, would you drink from my goblet? You ask the frog what the liquid is, and the frog motions for you to pick up the chalice. 
The golden liqueur within this goblet is the wine of inner strength and self-confidence. It is the nectar of all who would live their truths. Think about yourself for a moment, about the ways in which you would like to be a stronger person. About the truth of your heart and the ways in which you would like to walk your life path. Then hold those images firmly in mind. Drink from the chalice and the golden nectar will fill your veins and help you manifest your desires. Take a moment to think about what the frog said. Then, when you're ready, drink the wine. As you drink, the wine races down your throat like a liquid sunshine. It spills into your bloodstream and fills you with inner strength, with vitality and healing rays of warmth. You look at the world around you and now you seem more solid, more substantial cleansed and capable of handling any situation that may arise in your life. The frog says, any time you need to feel purified and protected, you may return to my pool and bathe in the cleansing waters. I will be here to greet you and you may rest in the silence that allows you to listen to your soul. Go now back to your world and remember I am always here if you need me. Say goodbye to the frog as it hops away. Your clothes are lying in a neat pile and as you put them on you find that they too have been cleaned. The faint hint of cedar lingers in the cloth, and as you dress, it feels as though you are wearing a shield of protection. When you have dressed, take another look at the pond and then turn back to the path. The sun is waning, it's late afternoon, and as you glide through the trees, you still feel small animals watching, waiting until you are gone to come out and hunt or drink. You traverse the path quickly, feeling much lighter on your feet than you did when you first entered the forest. Soon you are standing on the edge of the wood and you see in the distance the place from which you first journeyed. Listen to my voice. As I count from 20 backward to one, you will retrace your steps, becoming more alert and aware with each passing number. 20, 19, the sun is slowly descending in the sky, 18, 17, 16, you are starting to become aware of the world around you, 15, 14, 13, you are nearing the place where you began this journey. 12, 11, 10, you are becoming alert and aware. 9, 8, as you wake to full consciousness, you will feel refreshed and totally alert. 7, 6, your eyes are beginning to open. Five, four, three, take one deep breath. Two, take another deep breath and let it out slowly. 
one. You are back to the beginning. Take a third deep breath, let it out, and when you are ready, you may open your eyes. Suggested exercises for cleansing and protecting meditation. Number one, take a few moments to think about the inner strengths you desire. What are some ways that you can manifest them? Number two, if you feel a need for more protection or safety in your life, are there practical steps that you can take to achieve this? Number three, sometimes a meditation like this can leave us feeling a little sad or melancholy. And this is often because we feel safe and protected while in the meditation. But when we come out, we are back in a world of violence and anger. If this happened to you, is there some way you can make your personal environment feel more cozy, more inviting and safe? Often a change in color schemes can help. Rearranging the furniture, getting new locks for the doors, making herbal charms to drive away the negativity. There are many things you can do. Use your creativity and imagination. Number four, ask each person in the group to share what their interpretation of the forest was like. It is interesting to note the variations people will create with their minds. Sometimes something will appear in a meditation that has nothing to do with the suggestions presented, but it should not be dismissed. The person meditating needs to examine that image to determine what it means to them and why it appeared. Underworld. The underworld is the realm where our subconscious self exists. It is the realm of death, of hidden truths, of the parts of our psyche that we are often unaware of. Be aware, I am not talking about some version of heaven or hell, although most mythologies contain their own likenesses of these two extremes. What I am talking about is a place of shadow and silence where spirits can roam if they choose, if they've been trapped by their own unawareness or some violence that has shell-shocked them as they passed through the veil, or if they've not yet reincarnated. These astral realms are places where our own living souls can journey for brief times to discover knowledge about ourselves and our lives, either through astral projection or symbolic journeys. During the symbolic journey into and out of the underworld, we make a pilgrimage to the core of our souls to transform ourselves. We see this mirrored in the legends of the Sumerian Queen of Heaven, the goddess Inanna, when she descended into the underworld, stripped bare, naked as she stood before the very essence of death embodied by her sister Irishkigal. Irishkigal was, in essence, the shadow side of Inanna, the crone where Inanna was the mother. If we examine the nature of death at its core, we find pure transformation. When we journey into the underworld while still alive, we do so in the footsteps of Inanna as we choose to face our shadow selves and to shed light on all of our aspects, both positive and negative. For to be strong and capable to eliminate the fear of what we might do or be, we must examine both the light and shadow sides of our psyches and accept both as necessary for balance and wholeness. When we return from our underworld 
journey we return transformed, having faced our deepest fears, having faced the truth of who and what we are. We are better for accepting and acknowledging our shadow selves. To understand life, we must understand death. Death is the ultimate physical transformation. And when we go through cycles of change in our daily lives, we are undergoing forms of death in life. There are numerous gods and goddesses who rule over these realms, including Kali, Arishkigal, Anubis, Apep, Hel, Persephone, Hades, Keridwen, Pluto, Tuonatar, and Tuoni. There are also many paths leading to the underworld, over the river Styx and Sharon's boat, through the forests of Shadow and Tuonela, and along the Native American Blue Road of spirit. Another way that you can tap into this transformative introspective realm is through a guided meditation. During this meditation, I will not be introducing to you any of the gods recently mentioned. They are powerful and can be very fierce. Instead, you will journey through your personal underworld with the help of guardian animals. Guidelines for use. This meditation is appropriate for use during times of stagnation when you feel that transformation is needed to advance and grow in your life. I do not recommend using it too often. We must fully pass through each cycle of our life before we can effectively go on to something new. Perhaps it would be helpful to use this meditation each year before your birthday a perfect time to assess your growth and plan out your next steps on the road of life. Things you may need for the meditation, plants, lily, white carnation, white rose, incenses, kaipi, copal, or cedar, oils, oak moss, cypress, cedar, earth, crystals, lapis lazuli, bloodstone, jasper, candles, white or black. Underworld Meditation. Sit back and relax. Close your eyes and take three deep breaths. You are standing at the entrance to a cavern. It is evening, the twilight is turning to indigo, and the air is a little chilly. You pull your cloak tightly around your shoulders. The cavern is rumored to be filled with treasures, not gold and silver or gems and jewels and huge trunks or ancient priceless coins but the treasure of self-discovery. The rumors say the way is steep and dangerous and you must wear very stout boots. It will be dark walking for the treasure is said to be very far underground and you will need a light, a lantern. You also decide to take an animal guide with you. Think of what animal you would like to have at your side. It should be one you're comfortable with, and it can be any size and color you like. Take a moment to think about this. Then call and your animal guide 
will appear. When your guide appears, ask for its name. Now you must decide what tools you will need. Do you want a walking stick? Or do you feel that you need a weapon to protect yourself? Think about it for a moment. And whatever you need, will appear at your feet. Now, pick up your gear and take a step into the cave. Your animal guide will go with you. The cavern starts out fairly large and level. It is not easy to see, even with your lantern. And when you look around, shadows seem to loom over you. When you get back to the back of the cave, there is an opening just big enough for you and your animal guide to slip through. As you slide between the granite walls, you can smell moss where it is growing on the north side of the cavern. You are in a long, narrow passage. The floor of the tunnel slopes downward, a gentle grade at first. The passage is only about four feet wide and eight feet high. And if your animal guide is too big to fit in here, you find that it can magically shrink, adapting to the cavern's size. Hold up your lantern and begin your descent into the tunnel. At first, your footing is secure, the terrain is fairly smooth, and you find it easy going. But as you continue along, all the time descending, the slope begins to steepen. Now and then a rock juts out of the ground. Some are sharp and jagged, some smooth. In one place, you find a boulder blocking the passage that is so large that you and your animal guide have to crawl over the top. The temperature is dropping. It is cold in this granite world, and you shiver as a gust of wind from somewhere far below blows against your skin. It douses the fire in your lantern, and instantly darkness shrouds you in a velvet cloud. Stop and try to rekindle the light. While you search for your matches, you accidentally drop the lantern and you can hear it crash. Rolling down the slope in front of you. Your animal guide says, stand still for a moment to let your eyes adjust. Then use your other senses to guide you. As you obey, listen carefully to see whether you can hear any noises around you.
After a few minutes, you can make out dim shapes in the darkness. And your animal guide urges you to continue on. If you have a walking stick, it can help you pick out your way. Or you can stretch your arms out and use the sides of the tunnel for balance. You might want to hold on to your animal guide as you walk. The slope beneath your feet has become quite steep and you have to move very carefully in the dark to avoid falling. Rocks clutter the passageway. You could easily turn an ankle if you are not careful. Feel each step before you take it. Use your internal sense of guidance to keep yourself from tripping over the loose stones. Now the walls of the cavern feel moist and you can smell a dank, mildew odor permeating the air. If you touch the granite, you can feel mold growing in slick patches on the stone's surface. Once you think you feel a centipede or some such insect, scuttle away from your questing fingers. Your animal guide encourages you forward. You take another few steps. It is very steep and feels very dangerous. And then your foot touches level stone. You have come to the end of the passage. Stop for a moment to relax and take a few deep breaths. You think you hear water in the distance, the sound of a rushing river. You can smell it in the air. The moisture hangs heavy around you. With the help of your animal guide, continue through the tunnel until you feel the edges of the passage as it opens into what seems to be a large cavern. When you cautiously pass through, testing each step before you put full weight on your foot, you suddenly see a blaze of sparkling light. The walls are covered with a strange phosphorescence. It glitters blue and green and yellow, lighting the cavern with a shimmering glow. The cavern stretches farther than you can see. There appears to be another entrance on the other side directly opposite you. In the center of the cave, an underground river has broken through the floor, filling a large crater with water to form a small lake. The water smells fresh, but it shines with such an obsidian light that you aren't even sure whether it's real. Your animal guide leads you over to the edge. Do not be afraid, it says. Do not touch the water, but instead look deep into its surface and pay attention to what you see. 
When you lean over the edge and look into the dark, shining water, you suddenly see an image of yourself. You are lying in a coffin, dead. Your closest friend is talking about you, delivering a eulogy written of truths about your life and your nature. Listen to what is being said. Listen honestly to the truth that is waiting in your soul. Now, the pool shifts and changes and you see another image shimmer into view. This is an image of who you might become. It is not necessarily the ideal you, for there is no perfection in actual life but an image of how you might realistically, honestly evolve and grow over the next year. Watch and listen to learn what changes you could create for yourself this coming year. Once again, the pool ripples, only this time your animal guide says, ask to see what changes you must make in order to bring out the last image into reality. Lean close to the pool and ask, then listen, watch, and learn. Now, your animal guide tells you, this is the river that flows deep into the underworld. If you have old hurts and old grievances that you are ready to let go, that you have mourned and are now ready to put to rest, then bring them to the surface of your mind and dip your hand into the water. Lift it to your mouth and drink. And those memories will fade into the background of your mind and lose their power to hurt and taunt you. Think carefully about this. If you are not ready to let go of an anguish, nothing in the world will pry it away from you. But if you are truly ready to go on, to move into the next phase of your life, then drink from the river and let bygones be bygones. When you have finished, your animal guide says, the exit on the other side of the cavern will lead you out from this place. Remember, you can never go back the same way you came. Not from the underworld. You will never remain the same after a journey to your inner soul.
Stagnation has no power here. Change is stability and transformation remains the goal in this place. The passage on the other side of the cavern is actually a set of steps carved out of the stone. Your animal guide will remain by the lake until your next call for its help. The steps number 20 in all. Now, as I count from 20 to 1, you will become awake and alert and the feeling of balance will stay with you as you go about your daily life. 20 19 18 17 You are becoming more alert. 16 15 14 13 the sounds around you are becoming clearer. 12, 11, 10, 9. You are becoming aware of the world around you. 8, 7, 6, Five, four, you will awake clear and refreshed. Three, two, one. Take three deep breaths. When you are ready, you may open your eyes. Suggested exercises for underworld meditation. One, each year on the day before your birthday, assess your goals to determine whether or not they are still applicable how far you still have to go to achieve them, and what steps you can take during the coming year to see fruition. Number two, study the varying legends of the underworld. Find the universal correlations and the differences. Each mythology has its own cosmos and its own underworld. Make a chart showing the correspondences. Number three, transformation does not usually happen overnight. It is often a slow, tedious process. Look for small successes within the larger goals and celebrate each one as important. True change is a series of steps, not the end in itself. 